This is the second video in the video series of Open Mechanics of Python. In this one, I'm going to be covering the two-body problem and ODE solvers, where ODE stands for Ordinary Differential Equations. And as a reminder, that this video series, I want to focus on more of the software side of things and implementing it in Python. So as far as the derivations and explaining where, where things come from, I'm going to brush over quickly, but I'm going to make sure to leave plenty of links in the descriptions as to where you can get more thorough information about these things. So the two-body problem is when you assume that all that exists in the universe is a smaller body orbiting a larger body. You can think of this as a satellite orbiting Earth, where the mass of the satellite is negligible compared to that of Earth's mass, which is a very good assumption when you're talking about satellites. And from this, you get Newton's law of universal gravitation, which is the most fundamental differential equation of all of orbital mechanics. And it is a differential equation because you get the acceleration due to gravity. And in order to find its decision, you're going to have to take the integrals of this equation two times. And a quick overview of Newton's law of universal gravitation is right here. So you have the force, which is the force due to gravitation is equal to G, where G is the gravitational constant. This is just a constant that's in our universe. Big M is going to be the mass of the Earth. Little m is going to be the mass of your spacecraft. And then r is the distance between the center of the Earth and your spacecraft. And you're going to square that at the bottom. Again, I will post a derivation for this in the description. I don't, want to, I don't want to worry about it too much. But then what you get from this is this mu parameter, where mu is a gravitational constant for every body. So every body has a certain mass. So let's say the Earth has a mass. And the gravitational constant is a constant, so you can just put the both of them together, and that just becomes the attribute of whatever mass you're trying to analyze. So the mu value for Earth is a set value, um, and I'll be explaining that later in Python where I kind of just plug it in. But that is something that is important, that every body in the universe has a certain mu value. And this is the force, so in order to get acceleration, force equals mass times acceleration. So as you can see, if you set F equals to MA, the masses will cancel. So what you get is the acceleration due to gravity is just mu over R squared. That's a very simple equation, but it is extremely important. So then we get to ordinary differential equations and their solvers. So an ordinary differential equation we're going to get the Wikipedia version of this is an equation containing one or more functions of one independent variable and the derivatives of those functions. So what you have here is a differential equation because you have a differentiated equation, which is acceleration. And what you want to know is the position of your spacecraft versus time. So you have to take the integral once to get velocity and the integral twice to get your position over time. So that's why we have a differential equation. And analytical versus numerical solutions, you can think of this as analytical as something that you can solve on paper, you can write it down, you can find an exact solution. But in orbits, a lot of times, basically anytime you're not dealing with two body problems, that this is not going to be possible and you're going to need to find it numerically, which is what computers are for. And as far as methods, numerical methods of solving these ordinary differential equations, there's way more than I can count out there. Um, Everyone has its ups and downs, but for a quick overview, I will go ahead and show this, which is kind of a demonstration of how these work. So this orange one on the top, not sure what language that is, but that's fine. Let's just assume that this orange one is the actual equation that you're trying to estimate. And we'll start with the Euler method, the pink one at the bottom. So the Euler method is basically the simplest method you can use. It's where you assume that the slope between your time steps is equal. So you can see with this purple one that it diverges pretty quickly because it's a very bad assumption, obviously, but it's something that's computationally very easy to do. You just take one point, you find the derivative, you assume the derivative is constant until the next data point, you connect a line between them, and you keep going. And this method will very quickly go global error if it's not linear, which this one is not. And you can see that the pink one at the bottom is very far diverged after five seconds from the actual solution. Whereas this yellow one, well, however you say that, but Runcata, um, uses uh, fourth order, kind of four different spots to estimate the slope of the equation between two data points. So that gets it a much better accurate um, prediction of what the actual solution is going to be. And you can see that it's actually staying very close to that um, actual solution. And obviously there's always downsides to things. So the Runcata method does a lot more calculations in order to estimate what the actual slope is going to be, as opposed to the Euler method just as one.
So Owen method would be faster, but less accurate. So it's really gonna depend on what you're looking for. And there's a million different ways to solve these ordinary differential equations. That's just a few. And now we go to the ODE solver in Python. So I'm just gonna get straight. Oh, actually I'm gonna show. So in Python, um, there's this library called SciPy. It's very good, very powerful. And it has one of these uh, methods that it has is the ordinary differential equation solver, scipy.integrate.ode. Uh, very powerful, very useful. Um, you don't have to worry about this now, but all I wanted to show is how many different integrators it has. So available integrators are listed below by the set integrator method. I'll show that in the Python script, but basically you have one, two, El Soda three, Dopri five is four, Dopri eight five three is four. Five. So you can have five that you use, and for reference, this Dopri 5 is exactly what this, or it might not be this one, but Runcata. Runcata stands for RK, and this is the Runcata method, order 4, 5. And then this Dopri 853 is a Runcata method of order 8, which is 5 and 3. Um, just some things that kind of can help connect dots, but basically there's a bunch of different methods in order to solve this, and they all have their ups and their downs. So I'm gonna go back and we're just gonna get started with the Python side of things. Okay, so there are a few imports that I basically use in 99% of my scripts. They're really good. Python just has them. They should come with the automatic install. NumPy is MP, really good. Um, it's all about numerical methods, arrays. Uh, it's just really good. I basically use them in every script I ever use. And matplotlib. SPLT is all about plotting, so matplotlib, just everything that has to do with plotting, you're going to use it, so you ever want to plot, this is your library. And then, as I just showed before, scipy.integrate, import ODE, uh, this is going to be the order, ordinary differential equation solver, uh, it's going to be useful. And this last one, I'm not going to explain this video, it's going to be in the next video, but I need it in order to show you what we're going to get, axes, GD. Um, this basically just enables a matplotlib MPL um, to get like a 3D plot. And this def plot function, this is a, the plotting function that I like to use. Um, I'm not going to explain it in this video because it's outside the scope, but what I want to do is explain it in the next video, but I want to use it now in order to be able to display what the results are of solving um, the problem that we're going to do. So we need to define a few variables before anything. Earth radius equals 500. This is arbitrary. You can do whatever you want. I just chose 500 because it's easy. Oh, sorry. Earth radius is not 500. I was thinking of something else. 63, 78 kilometers. That is the Earth's radius, um, equatorial radius. So the polar radius of the Earth is definitely the equatorial one. Um, we're just going to use that for now. And then Earth mu, 398, 600. And this is in units of kilometers cubed per second squared. That probably looks weird, but it's just a way that units work out when you multiply the mass of the Earth times the gravitational um, constant. So we got those. Okay, so we're gonna start. And we need our differential equation. This is gonna be the first input into the differential equation solver. This is the differential equation. You can kind of see that that would make sense. First thing you do is you unpack the state. I'll explain this, m y z dx, u y v z equals y. So your, this ODE is a function that is written. And the first thing that it's gonna take is a differential equation because it is a solver. Um, and the things that it's going to, or the differential equation is going to need is your time, what time it is in the simulation, y, which is your state where your state here is gonna be your precision and your velocity, and it's a 3D problem, so each has three components. And this mu is an extra parameter, um, which you'll see when I initiate the solver that you have to explicitly say, hey, I also wanna add another parameter. But if you just didn't add another parameter, all that would be passed in into your differential equation is your time and your state. But I'm gonna put that in there and I'll show you where you implement that. And for convenience, I'm going to define the actual distance array or radial array to be, or precision array, sorry, um, to be a vector because it's going to be used in that law of gravitation equation. 
and we're also going to want the norm of the radius vector because um, well, we're only going to use it once now, but as you get later on, more perturbations require the norm of the radius vector as an input, so it's better just to calculate it once the first time and be done with it so you don't have to calculate it multiple times because you're just going to lose uh, performance if you do that. So that's just going to be norm, we'll just call it norm r equals mp dot norm dot norm of r. Uh, Linalg is linear algebra, so in the NumPy library, there's a sub-library called linear algebra where it has a bunch of really good equations and methods. So this is where the two-body acceleration comes in. This is just the law of, of universal gravitation. Again, I will use this notation of AXAYAZ because what actually happens is you can output a variable called A, which is acceleration. So there's negative R equals negative R times mu over norm R cubed. Um, so this is the acceleration um, and it looks a little different because this r already has the magnitude of that going and this negative is a direction because r is pointing from the center of the earth to your satellite and the force due to or the acceleration due to gravitation is going the other way so that's why you call it negative and you do the cubed where earlier um, in the derivation it was squared because there's already one magnitude of r in here so one magnitude over three it just equals two. So that just gives you the r squared. And for shorthand notation, because this r is has three elements as a vector, it's going to output three elements. So we can just do that. And then what you're going to return from this equation, we return, is your derivatives. I'll explain this. Easy. Where um your in the input to this function was your state, which is your position and your velocity. So then you want to return what the derivatives of those are. So the derivative of your precision is your velocity. So you're just going to pass that straight through. There's nothing fancy about that. You just go straight through. So then the derivative of your velocity is your acceleration, which you calculated here. That's the acceleration. So after you pass through, so you can see how they correspond to state and you directly pass on the derivatives of the state. And then we can get going. And as far as explicitly solving differential equations, they all need initial conditions. So we're just going to use some initial conditions of orbit parameters where we can just define um, our magnitude. This is the magnitude of how far we're going to be away. This orbit is going to be away from the center of the Earth is the Earth radius plus 500 kilometers. And this 500 kilometers is arbitrary. There's a million different orbits you could do. We just chose this for simplicity. And then Vmag so the magnitude of velocity of a circular orbit um, follows this equation. And I'm going to post a link to this because obviously I'm not deriving it in any way. But square root of mu over r will give you the velocity of a circular orbit. Um, again, I'll just post a link for that because I'm not deriving it. Position and velocity vectors. Because those are just the magnitudes and we need the vectors. So r0 equals an array. I'll explain this real quick. Zero. Zero. So when you have a circular orbit, which we are doing in this in this case, um, your velocity is always going to be perpendicular to your position, and that's kind of just how the orbits works. Your your position is in one direction, velocity is in the other, and that's going to give you circular motion. Uh, that's not just for orbits, that's basically for any type of circular motion. Something else we need is our time span, how long we want to run the simulation for, uh, which I'll define as 100 minutes, just because I know that the period of an orbit at around 400 kilometers is about 90 minutes, so this should be somewhere near uh, 100 minutes times 60 seconds per minute, yep, should be somewhere there. And then we need a time step, which we can arbitrarily define as 100. Depends on how fast you want to scale and how accurate you want it to be. You can make your time step whatever you want. But for these cases, it's that's plenty good. So then now we just want to find the total number of steps in the simulation, which can be int. Actually, I'll explain this too. So it would be two. So in order to get the number of steps that you want, you have to take your total amount of time and divide by the time steps. That's pretty simple. This mp.seal stands for sealing. 
um, will round any float number up to the nearest um, value. So say your value is 3.1, even though when you think of rounding, it would go to three. Ceiling means you just go up. So it's even if it's 3.01, it'll round to four. Uh, but that's still a float value and you want an integer. So that int command just makes it an integer. And then we want to initialize all our variables. Or I better call this initialize arrays. So y is equal to one, two, dot zeros. I'll explain this on step six. So we want to pre-allocate this memory because if you just take a list and you add to it every time, what's actually happening in memory is you have a list and if you want to append to it, it's going to create another list with a new value and then that's going to return your list. So you're creating a new list every time you want to append something, which is very not time efficient and you never know when you're going to run out of memory. So what this is doing, it's saying, I know the amount of steps, I know the amount of values you're going to have in this array. So just pre-allocate the memory. So instead of just making a new list every time adding on a new value, just replace the spot in memory that's already there. And I'll show you how that's implemented um, when we actually solve this. And the reason that that one is six is because you have six states, which is your position and your velocity when each one has an x, y, and z direction. So that's why that's six. And this is gonna be probably more clear when I actually, in a second, just go ahead and implement everything. Initial conditions, we'll call it y0 because y is usually labeled as a state and this is a state which is going to be elevation of one arrays. I'll just make these not arrays. This will make sense in a second. Where these are just Python lists. So y0 equals r0 plus z0. And in Python, when you add lists together, it's just gonna look like this because their lists are not arrays. So in Python, when you put two lists together, it concatenates them, just puts them, just adds them in that way, not element by element. So that puts them together. And then we want to set the initial y0 equals y0. So y's. So since we're going to start at the second step, um, where Python index is zero, so zero is the first. Uh, since we set it to all zeros in here, it we just have it as the first step means that zero position and zero velocity where it's not true. So we just want to put in the actual um, initial condition that this is the first step. And we want to just define one more variable where step equals one because step equals zero is actually the first step. So as of now, we want to start with step equals one because step equals zero is the initial condition. So we already have that. And now we're actually going to propagate the orbit. So how do you do this? Well, solver dot successful. I always spell this wrong. And step is less than n steps. I'm just gonna type this all out and then explain it. Solver dot integer. Solver dot t plus dt. You can see if you can kind of see what's going on before I can explain it. Oh, I press delete or insert. There we go. T is step. not time step y step equals solver dot y step plus equals one so what's happening here this is where you actually do the propagation where the solver does its work um, so while it's successful so solver can have a number of errors maybe the um, solution is too rigid um, it's making it way too hard of a turn the, the time step is too small it'll cause an error so that'll get it to get out of the loop and then step is less than the number of steps so um, once you reach the final number of steps, you're done. So then this will get out of the while loop when that happens. And that's why you have to increment step by one every time. And that's why it starts by one, because the first time this runs, this step is a one, which is the second value. So you want to make sure you don't override the initial conditions. So that's why that all that is going on. So you're done propagating. Once this while loop happens, it just does a bunch of magic. Um, and you want to extract the uh, position arrays. So how you do that is wise. So what's going on here is y's is this array where it's defined here, where it's n steps. Let's just say it's 100. It's more than this, I think. Oh, no, it's actually 60 steps. Um, so this is 60 steps for n steps. So this is an array that is 60 rows wide by six columns uh, long, I guess. Um, so what you're doing here when you're indexing into this is you're saying you want all the rows 
because that's all the rows, that's all the time steps. And colon the three, you want everything up until index three, which is non-inclusive. So it's basically getting all the rows and column zero, one, two, where zero, one, two is R, X, L, Y, R, Z. And then I already have this, this um, function written, this plot Rs. Um, I'll explain that in the next video, but this Python uh, body.py, oh, not u, uy, and I think I'm going to get an error for display. Uh, and then this always takes a while because the first time it runs because it has to compile everything. Python actually does have compiled things, um, makes it fast, so it's not the first time you run them. And I know what the problem is. I need to activate this. And if everything works out well, we'll get a nice plot. If not, then we'll just have to debug whatever is going on. I think everything looks good. Hmm. Taking a long time though. Of this, not sure why. Oh, shit. Solver is not defined. Totally forgot to do that. Solver, we gotta initiate the solver. So, the solver equals this is when we call the ODE function, the PQ. Uh, that was imported before. That's part of the SciPy package that I talked about earlier. Solver set integrator talked about this earlier too. Showed all the different methods that solver can have in order to solve these differential equations. Has a million of them. I've just found that L soda is the fastest by far, so that's what I like to use. Um, very fancy method. Not sure what it is, but it solves what you need to solve. And then you need to set your initial conditions. It wants to be y zero and zero because it's your state. You want your initial state, and then you want the initial time, which we know is zero. So you can just plug it in. And solver.set f params. This is where I was talking about where you want to give your differential equation function a different value or one more value. So you're saying also give it this earth new value, which is going to be the third argument in that. So save and run. And from that, we get this solution where it is just a simple equatorial zero inclination circular orbit around Earth. Again, I'll explain the plotting function in the next video, but this is basically just how you integrate uh, your initial conditions and you get an orbit solution. So that pretty much concludes that. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's, you know, if I went too fast on anything, went too slow on anything, want more explanation or something, anything else. All input is helpful. And yep, the next video is going to be all about uh, plotting and how to just go ahead and make that plotting function for 3D and maybe I'll show some other cooler plots too. So yep, let me know if you have any opinions and thank you for watching.